two, one. I'm on. Okay. We're going to do this fast, furious, and everything. Heads up, because you're in the hoodwood. I'm the Black Bandit, KJ Green, welcoming you to the final edition of Sports for the Hoodwood from 2022, December 31st. It's five hours for my clock, maybe a couple, of hours, a couple of minutes here or there, from the new year. So we're just going to do the Week 17 picks and just leave it at that, and then I'll have a full show next week with the entire show, uh, Fat Dab Head Slap, look at the CFP who's made it through, which is looking like so far, it's going to be an upset with uh, TCU upsetting Michigan, which I never saw that one coming. I know, I know. Don't even remind me of who I said. I thought Michigan was going to give TCU trouble, that they were going to win big. Don't remind me. We'll get to that next week. Anyway, we'll look at the Week 17. Time's running out on a lot of teams. These are make or break games for many in the playoff positioning and even playoff qualifying. You know, the, now, the Bengals, Chargers, and Ravens all took three more playoff reservations, and now there are only two left. The AFC South will have an automatic qualifier and get a home game to boo, but they, like NFC South, may not finish with a winning record. And there's one of the wild card spot, so you have six teams jostling for one said spot. Now, at present, Miami is in the catbird seat, but facing one of the two teams directly behind them in that spot, the Patriots. The other team is in the Jets, Titans, Steelers, and Raiders are all needing a myriad of results to fall their way in, in addition to winning out to qualify. Now, in the NFC, the picture, like the AFC, is more clear at the top than at the tail end. As like last week, only the Vikings and 49ers know that they will be playing their first playoff game at home as respective champions of the Northern and Western divisions. Philly and Dallas have clinched playoff spots, but are still grappling for the division title and the home playoff game that comes with it. The coveted top seeds in both conferences are still very much in play. Now, once again, submitted for your perusal, review, and approval of this week's picks with the eyes being provided by ESPN for entertainment and comparison purposes only. I need not remind you of the chances that you take with the lines. I don't pay boogies for your bad beats. As noted previously, um, I didn't put in a Thursday. I, I kind of just put it out on my Twitter feed, which you can find at Hoodwood Sports. I picked correctly Dallas over, over Tennessee Titans, which that was kind of a layup, but was the game was a little closer than many people thought I said. So let's start with the games for tomorrow, January 1st. It's a CBS doubleheader weekend, which most of the country is going to get the Vikings and the Packers. It used to be Vikings and Packers on CBS wasn't a big deal. It's like, wow, there's no CBS. But they've been on Fox the last 20-some-odd years, and CBS getting a full NFC game. That's a, kind of a different switch from um, different weeks past. Anyway, let's get started. First game on the docket, 4-11 Cardinals, 5-10 Falcons, and Mercedes-Benz in Atlanta. These are all 1, 1 p.m. games until I say otherwise. Falcons are four-point favorites. Falcons, fast fact, have lost the last nine meetings with the Cardinals in Atlanta. Oh, I'm sorry, part, they've won the last nine meetings in Atlanta. I'm stumbling over my own words, look, reading my own, my own words here. Anyway, this is a useless aviary contest between two veritable dead ducks. I'll keep this one brief. I'm shamelessly rooting for QB, um, rookie QB uh, Desmond Ritter to do well to get the Falcons' his first NFL win. I think he gets it as Western teams playing early games are usually dead meat. Pick here is Atlanta. Lions Bears, that game's at Ford Field. Uh, the Lions are six point favorites. The Bears, eight game losing streak. Uh, is matching 78 in 2002 teams as the team's longest slide. Now, the Bears are sleepwalking through games now, in fact, borne out by the thrashing they took last week to a no-nonsense Bills squad. They go to the edge of the Motor City to face the Kitties, who are who hamstrung their own playoff chances with a listless loss in Carolina. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lions need to go have a lot go right for the claim of playoff berth. And if they fall against the lowly Bears, they don't deserve playoff contention anyway. The pick here is Detroit. Next on the docket, we have the Jag Jaguars at the Texans in Houston at NRG Stadium. Jags four-point favorites. Uh, the Texans, uh, fast fact, the Texans law have won the last nine meetings, including the winning the, uh, their first game of the season over the Jaguars. So that is a streak that needs to be broken, and the Jags 
if they want to stay in the AFC South hunt, which win or lose that game against the Titans is going to be basically a one game showdown for a winner in. Um, the Jays playing meaningful football for the first time in January for a while, in a while. And a win continues their momentum ahead of that high state game I mentioned about them, the Titans, next week. The Titans, I, the Texas, why I think they've been troublesome for a lot of teams. I think they've already shot their shot, winning uh, last week against the aforementioned Titans and playing the Chiefs and Cowboys, respectively. I don't think they're going to hang with the Jags on this one. The pick is Jacksonville. Next on the docket, we have the uh, 4 and 11 Broncos taking on the 12 and 3 Chiefs in Kansas City. The Broncos' sorry season basically have come to a nadir with the atrocious loss against the Rams on Christmas Day. Nathaniel Hackett was given his walking papers, and basically that Broncos team is basically going to be cleared out in the coaching staff and gutted at the end of the season. I'm thinking maybe Sean Payton, maybe, could be. You never know. But there's going to be a new coach in, Bron in Bronco country, and Russell Wilson has got to get his mind right. And whoever coaches the Broncos is going to have to um, further that in with Russell Wilson because that boy, he's all in his head. He doesn't know what's going on, and the Broncos are playing a mess. Playing Kansas City, good luck. That is going to be our Hoodwood Lock of the Week. Kansas City is the pick, the Hoodwood Lock of the Week. Next on the docket, 8-7 Dolphins at 7-8 Patriots. Uh, they're playing up in Gillette in Foxborough. The Dolphins have law have won the last four meetings, but three of those four meetings have been in Miami. Now the Dolphins' once promising playoff hopes are fading badly. Now, as the uncertain status of Tua Tagovailoa, I'm hearing that Teddy Bridgewater is going to be uh, getting the starting nod, even though Tua Tagovailoa is not in concussion protocol. Now, I still think that the Dolphins are going to be in fairly capable hands because the pack the Pats are a mess. They have no identity. Are they a running team? Is this Mac Jones' team? Is there are there a defensive squad? They don't know, and they're going round and round and round in circles. This may be the perfect soft landing for Teddy Bridgewater. I'm picking Miami here. Next on the docket, 4-10-1 Colts at the 8-6-1 Giants. Uh, games being played at, at MetLife in East Rutherford. The Giants 5.5-point favorites. Giants clinch a playoff spot with a win here. I have said that I believe the Colts will not win another game this season. I'm sticking to that. I don't need to say that much more of it. Pick it the New York Giants. Next on the docket, 6-9 Saints taking on the 13-2 Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. Uh, the Eagles are five-point favorites. The Eagles clinched the NFC East with a win. And the Eagles have won the last three meetings in Philly. That's fast fact. Though the Saints are holding on to a sliver of a playoff hole, they're going to need a lot of things to fall their way. Eagles, on the other hand, are trying to get as many bodies healthy, including Jalen Hurts, to facilitate, facilitate a deep playoff run. Now, the Saints are decent enough to give the Eagles trouble, but I don't think that's enough to steal a win on the road. That pick here is Philadelphia. Next on the docket, we have the 6-9 Panthers taking on the 7-8 Bucks at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. The Bucks are four-point favorites here. Um, the buck the fast fact, this is something that surprised me when I looked this up. The Bucks have not scored more than 21 points in any of their wins, and they've lost all three games in which they've scored more than 20, more than 21. Go figure. Now you can sneer at the records if you like, but this showdown does have a big impact on the playoff picture. Panthers continue their uneven play with stunning dismantling of the Lions last week. And they head to the bay to tangle with an equally uneven Buck squad that you're never sure who's going to show up. Trusting the Bucks to score and win is dangerous, but I'm going to take a chance anyway. The pick is Tampa Bay. Uh, the last one, well, the 1 p.m. games is 6-9 Browns taking on 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one Commanders at FedEx Field in Landover. 1 p.m. kickoff, as I stated, is the last of the 1 p.m. kickoffs. The Commanders are two-point favorites. And uh, something I looked up and I saw, I was like, is this right? The commanders are seven and seven, or seven, seven and one overall, and seven, seven and one against the spread. And I don't really see usually teams with the same record against the spread as their overall record. Now, the Browns are still trying to find their footing on, under Deshaun Watson. The Browns aren't getting wins, but they're playing teams tough. 
heading to the nation's capital to face the commanders who are on the verge of locking up a playoff berth, but they lack that, that stability at quarterback that the Browns have. When would you ever think that someone would envy the Browns on a quarterback stability front? Go figure. That said, the Browns do have a look at the team that's already making plans for 2023. And I'm not just talking about January 2nd and January 8th. I'm talking about next year. They, I think they've already packed it in, and the commanders fighting to stay afloat in the playoff race will take advantage of it. I think the pick here is Washington. Let's go to the late games. First of the late games, 11-4, 49ers taking on the 6-9 Raiders at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. That's a 4-0-5 kickoff on Fox. Uh, the Niners are 40, uh, 49ers are nine and a half point favorites. Um, the Raiders' Jared Stidham is making his first start against a Niners defense that leads the NFL in scoring and total defense. Good luck, kid. The, the Niners are still trying trying to get themselves to the highest seed possible, and uh, they're heading Vegas to tangle with Raiders squad, who is still in distant connect, contention for a playoff spot, but. They've essentially waved the white flag by benching Derek Carr and going with Jared Stidham. This is a recipe for disaster. And Stidham and the Raiders are going to get snowed under out in the desert. The pick is San Francisco. Next on the docket is the 7-8 Jets and the 7-8 Seahawks at Lumen Field in Seattle. That's also a 4 5 kickoff. The – I have it set here. That's not right. I don't know. They, 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 <laughs> yeah, the Patriots are fake. No, the Patriots favorite. Wait a minute. When I said I, I listed here, please forgive any kind of stumbles. I will go to my trusted phone and I will say that. <laughs> That's the thing about doing this, this high wire act on live TV. The Jets are favored by a point and a half. Now, the, the Geno Smith is trying to gain his third win over a former team. That's a fast fact. Yeah, he's defeated the Chargers and the Giants, whom he's both played for. Now looking for that third that trifecta by defeating the Jets, who were once his employer. How f Oh, man, I just really messed that one up. Uh, let me see. The Jets. What can I say about the Jets and the Seahawks? Both teams were at one point looking really, really strong for a uh, playoff berth. Now both of them are needing to win and get help. Which team is more desperate? I think the Seahawks are more desperate. The Jets have tried like a scout. They've played hard, and it doesn't make any sense because they're not going to get it done. Pick here is Seattle. Next on the docket, we have the 9-6 Chargers taking on the 5-10 Rams. Game being played at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. No matter who the Chargers or the Raiders, they're oh, Chargers or Raiders. Did I say that Raiders? Man, the Raiders haven't been in, in Los Angeles in 25 years. And I said the Raiders. The Chargers and the Rams, both of them play at SoFi Stadium, but they will only play each other once a year in the regular season, once every four years. So this game was actually flexed from prime time. It's 425. It's only going to be seen by probably about a quarter of the nation, most of the people in SoCal and a little pocket in Oregon because Justin Herbert played at Oregon. Anyway, this is the second battle of L.A., but the first time that these teams have faced each other at their shared venue while the road chargers are gearing up for a playoff for Ray. The defending champ Rams are basically playing out the string and winding down, but they were buoyed by a Christmas Day evisceration of the Broncos. Now, the Chargers are positioning themselves for a playoff run and will be rude guests to their landlords. I guarantee that an L.A. team will win this game. But I'm bunch. Anyway, the pick is the Los Angeles Chargers. The, four, the second 425 game is the 12-3 and Vikings at the 7-8 and Packers. Game being played at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And it's a 425 kickoff on CBS. Note the network change is not on Fox. It's on CBS. Packers are three-point favorites. And the fast fact of their 12 wins, 11 of them have been by one score or less. Their one win of more than one score is 23-7 win, week one win over the Packers. Now, the Vikings keep living on the edge winning a wild home finale against the G-Men. They head to the frozen tundra to face a Packers squad. Still holds out slim hope. 
for a playoff berth. They need to win out and get help to achieve it. The pundits are still talking about Rodgers, the Packers, being backed into a corner and are a dangerous animal. But I think the Packers have been fooling a lot of people, beating up weak teams, and, and, and that's hiding a lot of flaws in this team. The last three wins have been against the Bears, the I was looking right. Oh, the Bears, the Rams. And I, went, I was looking right at the scoreboard. It went right out of my head. The Packers' last three wins have been against the Bears, the Rams, and the Dolphins. And only the Dolphins are really playoff contenders, and they're falling apart quickly. Everybody thinks the Packers are this dangerous team, like a wounded animal. I think they're overrated. The flags are flawed themselves, to be sure, but I think they expose their flaws, flaw, the Packers' flaws in spades. And finally, deep six, their fledgling playoff hopes for good. Lord, my, my, thing, my pick here is Minnesota. Anyway, the seven and eight Steel, the Sunday night game is the seven and eight Steelers taking on the ten and five Ravens. And people ask me, what are you doing? I'm typing. I actually send my picks out in a mailer. And if you want to be on that mailer, send me a line, KJ Green Sports from the Hoodwood.com, and I will include you on my mailing list. Anyway, the next game is the 7-8 and eight Steelers at the 10-5 and five Ravens. Game being played at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. That's an 8-20 kickoff. That game was flexed to primetime. The Ravens are two-point favorites. Fast back. Steelers coach Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season in Pittsburgh. A loss here would ensure his first. Now, I love how reading how NFL chooses to flex its games in the prime time, which is how they make that determination. As per the uh, NFL record and fact book, it's, quote, to get the most desired matchups and allow surprise teams a chance to play their way on prime time. Steelers on a surprise team, but this is a critical game between the, the, these two AFC North rivals. Now, the Steelers, after being flexed out of a Sunday night earlier this year, have been flexed into a Sunday nighter this week with the Ravens. Now, the Ravens' sans Lamar Jackson are trying to keep pace with the Bengals ahead of a possible division showdown game next week in Cincinnati. I think the lack of Jackson is a fatal blow to the Ravens, and though they are a playoff-bound team, this will be their last home game because they will not win the division. The pick here is Pittsburgh. It's the Hoodwood upset of the week. Finally, the Monday night game is one a lot of people have been talking about for the last couple of weeks, and it is here. 12 and 3 Bills taking on the 11 and 4 Bengals at Pecor Stadium in Cincinnati. It's an 8 30 kickoff on ABC and ESPN. ESPN is showing the Rose Bowl. Uh, game starts at 5. You know, college games usually run long. ABC is picking up the thread and pushing up a little bit later so they can simulcast them both. But it's going to be on both networks. The fast fact here is with 23 wins between the two teams, this is the highest win total of two teams in Monday night football regular season history. Um, the, the Monday night regular season finale, like I said, cannot be understated that it is a doozy. since Both teams are playoff bound and the winner could very well be hosting a playoff rematch in J later this month, later in January. The Bills it, often inconsistent offense has done enough to plow through their last six opponents. They haven't lost since that epic loss against the Vikings. That was in November, but they face a steep, steep challenge in the defending AFC champs who sported an impressive seven game winning streak of their own. This is a very tough call. I went back and forth between this when I was looking over games. The Bengals built a formidable home venue run, but the Bills are still probably one of the few teams that might be able to crack the code. That said, the Bengals are still trying to lock down their division and will play accordingly. It'll be a, it'll be a tight game, but the pick is Cincinnati, and they better not make me regret picking them. There you have it. Last week, it was 12 and 4 with my lock and upset correct. Overall, I'm 135, 86 and 2, 12 and 4 on my locks, 9 and 7 on the upset. And that will do it. Next week, I will have full uh, full reports on the CFP tight, uh, semifinal games and an early and a prediction of who will win said game. And I'll also have all the regular stuff as you come to know and love in the Hoodwood. 
to the wood hot five, fat dab head slap, and I'll make up some sort of final word from the wood on what I've seen over the past 12 months, as well as week 17, or week 18, not week 17, week 18 picks uh, to wrap up the regular season because all the games are on Sunday next week. So you'll see the sports from the hood wood a little bit later in the week, probably be about Thursday or Friday, put it all together, and it'll be a little bit more cleaner. Not a live show, but It'll be a little bit more cleaner with the graphics and everything. And we'll talk about Snuffy, which I don't think you can see the, the, the sign he's got up. He's going to launch his own NFT card lines. He figures if Trump can do it, <laughs> he can too. Uh, my man, uh, Krishan, made a suggestion about that. Snuffy heard it and he ran with it. So he'll have his fun with that. We'll have some fun talking about that as well as, as, well as a myriad of other sports theme stuff in sports from the hoodwood this is the final show of 2022 thank you so much for your patronage and things that you sent to me to make try to make this show better we're going to make it a lot better in 2023 a lot more consistent a lot more things to do a lot more things to show i'm gonna see if i can get graph more graphics and maybe even put in clips or whatever i don't know it's, it's gonna be a jumbled mess but it's gonna be a lot of fun for all my people's at rage pictures holly tucky films all the staff here at Black Banner Productions. I am KJ Green, bidding you a fond farewell from 2022 and until 2023. And next, next we speak again, fellow sports fans. I'm KJ Green. <laughs>